is ionization energy. Ionization energy, and that's measured in kilojoules per mole, is the energy required to remove an electron from a gaseous atom or ion. So what we're looking at here is how much energy does it take to not just move an electron to an excited state, but to actually rip it away from the pull of the nucleus to form an ion. First ionization energy, and it's important, you guys, I sub 1, meaning that this is the first electron that's being removed from the atom, is the energy required to remove an electron from a neutral atom. So by definition, I sub 1 is removing an electron from an atom that has equal numbers of protons and electrons. We can write a general ionization equation for this that looks like this. So this is any old atom. Okay, so this is any old element. This is not a specific element. This is a variable right here. Any old element in its gaseous state, and we're going to remove an electron from this thing. We're going to ionize it, remove an electron from it to give us a positively charged cation, positively one charge, because we're only removing one electron, um, plus the electron that's now free to roam wherever it's going to go. What do you think? Endothermic or exothermic? Do you think energy um, is released? In removing this electron, or do you think it takes energy to remove that electron? It's endothermic. Okay, it, it requires energy. Uh, the kilojoules per mole of ionization energy is always a positive value. Okay, so it's always an endothermic process, which makes sense to pull an electron away from. Um, the pull of the nucleus is certainly going to take an input of energy. So let's continue removing electrons. The second ionization, that is I2, I sub 2, is the energy required to remove an electron from an or the positive one charged ion to produce a positive two charged ion. So, second ionization, removing the second electron. Sometimes that's a second valence electron. Sometimes we're digging into a quantum level closer to the nucleus. But the overall question is, what do you think? Do you think the second ionization, the amount of energy, is going to be greater than or less than the first ionization energy? Well, it's always going to be greater. It's always going to be greater. Second ionization is always greater than the first because after the first ionization, there's less electron-electron repulsion. We've lost electrons. Uh, therefore, we know from atomic radii, the valence shrinks closer to the nucleus, and that's going to increase the attractive force between the nucleus and the valence electrons. And so it's going to require more energy to remove an electron from the valence because now everything is shrunk closer to the nucleus and the attractive force from the nucleus is going to be greater. Okay, so the attractive force of the nucleus is slightly like gravity in that the, the or it's very much like gravity in that the closer the distance, okay, the shorter the distance, the greater the attractive force between the two. So the closer an electron is to the nucleus, the more energy it's going to take to remove 
that remove a valence electron from that uh, atom, or in this case, with second ionization, it's always going to be a positively charged ion um, because we've already removed one electron. Okay, so the trend is easy here. Uh, first ionization is always less than second ionization, is always less than the third ionization, is always less than the fourth ionization, etc. So every subsequent electron that is being removed from an atom. Um, it requires more and more and more energy because of this. As we remove electrons, we've got less electron-electron re repulsion. Everything is just moving closer to the valence. And of course, as we remove valence electrons and we dig in to a quantum level, even closer to the nucleus, ionization is going to um, require more and more and more. So let's talk about trends. In general, ionization energy is going to increase across a period. Because as you go across a period, you get an increase in effective nuclear charge. An increase in effective nuclear charge is going to cause, uh, is going to result in a greater ionization energy for electrons. So you guys, it's going to be opposite of atomic radius in that as atomic radius gets smaller or ionic radius gets smaller, ionization energy is going to get greater because the closer we get to the nucleus, the more energy it takes to remove an electron from an atom or an ion. What about as we go down a group? This should be pretty, pretty uh, self-evident. Okay, as we go down a group, ionization energy is going to decrease. And again, that is because electrons are inhabiting quantum levels further from the nucleus. And because they're further from the nucleus, they don't require as much energy to remove the electron. And we are 